David here with Figboot on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I have said this on many occasions, but one of my favorite things about this hobby is making new discoveries. Uh, new companies, new designs, as well as new artisans who all bring their unique takes to this pastime. It's one of these new artisans that I wanted to highlight today. At least it was an artisan who was new to me. Uh, her name is Ruth Bolton, and the name of her company is Shibui North. Uh, the pen that I'll be showing you today is called the Kitsune. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this unique pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about this design. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Ruth for providing this pen for review. Uh, she is based out of the UK in Newcastle, which is in the northern part of England. She creates her pens on a CNC machine and finishes them using techniques like urushi and gilding and anodizing and engraving or combinations of those techniques. Ruth lived in Japan for 10 years where she studied ceramics and urushi, so a lot of her design inspiration comes from that experience. It's her goal to make each of her pen designs unique, and I feel she has certainly done that. The pen arrives in this box, and inside we have a pen. This is the Shibui North Kutsune. Uh, shibui is a Japanese word meaning rustic, yet refined. Uh, it's a rather contrasting idea, which really describes the look that Ruth is going for in her pens. Uh, kitsune is the Japanese word for fox. Uh, foxes are a common subject in Japanese folklore. Stories depict legendary foxes as intelligent beings who possess paranormal abilities that increase with their age and wisdom. Uh, this pen is made from aluminum. Uh, the metal is sandblasted, and then a bronze Cerakote ceramic finish is added by hand. Uh, the final coating contains some metallic elements, which creates a 3D shimmer to each piece, as well as like a satin-like finish for extra tactility. Um, this final coat also adds some corrosion and UV resistance as well. Uh, then the middle portion of this pen is laser engraved with this intriguing pattern. Um, it almost looks a bit like a topographical map. This pattern is in the Mokume style, which is a Japanese metalworking technique with layered patterns. Uh, the pattern is actually the same on both sides of the pen. There's so much variance in this pattern that it really doesn't feel repetitive, and you don't really notice it's the same pattern on both sides, just reversed. Okay, let's take a look at the parts of this uniquely designed pen. Uh, let's start with the top of the cap. It is flat. Um, the cap is very short, only about an inch and a half long. Uh, then we have the transition to the engraved barrel. That transition is smooth. Uh, the barrel is straight until you get to another transition to the blind cap, which is identical to the forward cap and comes to a flat end. Uh, this blind cap unscrews and you have access to the converter. Um, I like that you have ample access here. I've seen other pens, uh, namely some Leonardo models, where you can access the converter through the blind cap similar to this, but it's really a significantly shorter portion of the converter. It barely peeks out and it can be difficult to twist just because you don't have much grip on it. Um, that's not the case with the access provided here. Um, the barrel has a rather large ink window. Now, there's a couple of things I really like about this window, and I have one suggested improvement as well. The first thing I like is that what you're seeing through this window is the clear portion of the converter. You're not seeing any of the metal portions of it at all. So it really gives the visual appearance of just being an ink window. Um, seeing some of the metal of the converter would have broken up the pleasing aesthetics of this window. Um, as far as the improvement goes, with there only being a single window here, it can be a bit tough to see your ink situation, even though this is large. Um, it would have been nice if there was a window on both sides of the pen. That way more light could get in and you could uh, see a little bit better in there. Um, while I do like this uninterrupted backside of the barrel, um, even though this window is rather large, I don't feel it would really break up the looks of the pen if there was an additional window here. Um, and then the other thing I really like about this window is that it's off-center. Um, while having something off-center would typically annoy me greatly, there's a purpose for this one being off-center, and that's to allow you to determine which is the front of the pen and which is the back. 
Um, if this window were centered, then you'd have a 50-50% chance of being wrong and opening up access to the converter. And that would really annoy me when you wanted to get access to the nib. Um, having it be off center gives you a visual clue in order to open the side that you're intending to open. Uh, in regard to the business end of this pen, the cap twists off in just under three rotations, and underneath we have a stainless steel number six Bach nib. Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, as well as double broad. Um, I do like the patterning on this nib. It has the company name, Shibui, surrounded by some waves. Uh, Ruth lives near the ocean and wanted to incorporate a bit of a nautical theme into her pens as well. Now, with the Cerakoting, uh, it really gives this nib a unique look, which I care for, uh, but it does stiffen it up a bit. Uh, on top of that, you can see here that the Cerakote has been polished away from the tip of the nib, which comes into contact with the paper. While there is a bit of a sweet spot with this nib where you're only using the polished portion, um, if you should happen to stray from that particular angle, you can start to hit the Cerakoting on the paper a little bit, which will cause the nib to have a bit of a drag to it. Um, at times it could feel like writing with like, like something like an unsharpened pencil. So I wish the polished portion of the nib were just a little bit larger. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, there's no traditional section to speak of with this pen. Uh, so there are the cap threads and then the transition to a fairly large step up to the barrel. Um, this design reminds me of some of the Graf von Faber-Castell pens when there's a very small metal section, uh, and that really isn't my favorite design. I do find that my grip when I'm using this pen tends to gravitate off the end, resting on the drop down and the threads rather than the section. Um, it doesn't slip off the end, it stays on there nicely, um, but you know, I tend to grab my pens a little bit near the end of the section, so keeping my grip completely on the barrel doesn't feel as natural to me, and the nib feels a little bit too far back for me personally. Um, if you should grip your pens entirely on the barrel, uh, the engraving really does help you maintain a grip, and uh, I don't find my grip slipping off the end at all. Um, on top of that, the engraving isn't too deep, so it doesn't uh, create any sharp or rough edges, and it does feel comfortable in the hand as it rubs up against the inside of your palm. Um, the cap is not designed to post. Um, as you saw earlier, this pen does utilize a standard international converter. Um, I guess you could cram a short or long standard international cartridge in there, but I feel that that would be uh, unnecessarily cumbersome. So it's best to stick to the converter and bottled ink. Now, when you're inking this pen, you remove both the blind and forward caps, and then you dip the pen into the bottle ink of your choice, um, and everything stays together. There's no section that you're taking out. Um, the downside of that is that the ink does have a tendency to get into the grooves of the cap threads, and it can be rather difficult to extract it. Um, I do find that after inking, you know, I dab off the nib and the section as usual, but I need to use something like a damp cloth or a tissue to really get in there and wipe down the threads to clean as much of the ink out of there as possible. Um, it's just a bit of a nuisance. Um, another aspect of this design that I care for is that both of the caps are interchangeable. They're identical. So when you are inking uh, the pen and both caps are removed, you really don't need to keep track of what cap went on what end of the pen. They just both fit on either side, which was a wise design choice. Uh, the Shibui Kitsune is only available through the Shibui website. Um, I will put a link to it in the notes below. Uh, these models retail for $136, which I feel is a reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. Um, I believe that each of these pens are made to order, so the shipping time might not be immediate, but the wait time uh, to have one made was only a week or so at the present time. Uh, and from what I saw on the site, uh, international shipping was only $13, which I feel is a reasonable price as well. Um, these are really unique pens, and the company has a number of other cool offerings on their site, which are well worth checking out. Um, does this pen have a few quirks? Sure. But I enjoyed, uh, you know, using and supporting pens from individual artisans who create cool and unique offerings. Uh, this is really unlike any other pen in my collection, and I do care for it a great deal. I really like the uh, engraving on here as well.
Now, I realize that it is still December, but you know, I already have come out with my list of favorite things for this past year, but this pen is an early contender to end up on next year's list. Um, it's just a lot of fun to use. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Shibui North Kitsune. I just wanted to give you another closer look at that engraving. I just think it's really cool and nice. And you can see where that pattern duplicates right there. Uh, and it's kind of flipped on either side, but it's so unique that you're not gonna ever notice. And then plus you're never seeing both of them at the same time since they're on opposite sides of the pen. Um, also, just to show you, included, they give a, a couple of uh, stickers as well. This is Shibui North, a uh, nice little cat in Japan, as well as a uh, London Pen Show sticker, which was nice. In regard to some size comparisons with some other metal pens, here it is with a Visconti Opera Metal, and that's the Speedboat. Uh, and then here is a Gravitas Skittles. Uh, and then finally, here is a Keras Pen Company ink. And then in regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Leonardo Memento Zero. This is the Blue Hawaii. And here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point. And then here it is with a Franklin Christoph Model 66. You know what? That's, we'll put that in the middle. You can see that that's significantly larger. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, um, here it is with the Memento Zero and the Gravitas. And then here it is with the Keras Ink. So here we go with the writing sample for the Shibui. North, and this is the Kitsune. This is a medium stainless steel nib, uh, and the ink that I'm using here, I thought it matched the pen well, which is one of my favorites, which is Diamine. Ancient Copper. This is what the ink looks like. It's just a nice solid coppery brown. Um, here it is with Private Reserve's Copper Burst, which is nice as well with a bit more shading. And then here it is with Leonardo's Nose Moscata. And then this is what Diamine's 80 milliliter bottles look like. Uh, it's a really nice bottle, nice wide uh, neck and plenty deep enough to get any pen in here. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, as I mentioned in the review, I think that this Cerakoting kind of firms up this nib. It is a bit on the stiff side. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of it. Um, and it does drag just a little bit. Um, it just does kind of feel like a bit of an unsharpened pencil. Um, the ink flow, I'd say, is medium for this medium nib. Um, it's not high or low. And then in regard to some reverse writing... Um, I'd say it is a little bit on the scratchy side just because it's hitting some of that uh, part of the nib that still has the Cerakote co co coating on there. And then in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So there we have this very interesting pen from Shibui North. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit different in your, to add to your collection, I think it's well worth checking out. Uh, I'll put a link to uh, the site in the notes below. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.